Dear young people. Don't vote. Don't vote. Everything's fine the way it is. Trump, that was us. He's our guy. Tax cuts for the rich? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm rich as f Climate change? That's a you problem. I'll be dead soon. That was, yes, a satirical campaign aimed at young people to try and get them out to vote Democrat in the U.S. midterms in a couple of weeks. Because historically, young people don't show up in large numbers. So the ad's message to the young, if you care to make any change for your future, like on climate change, then do something about it. Well, one group has decided to try. 21 young Americans between the ages of 11 and 22 have made plenty of news by suing the U.S. government over climate change. They say their constitutional rights are being violated by a fossil fuel industry that's damaging the environment and putting their future at risk. But are these kids wasting their breath? Al Gore has been warning about the dangers of climate change since an inconvenient truth came out, and that was more than a decade ago. If you look at the 10 hottest years ever measured, they've all occurred in the last 14 years. And the hottest of all was 2005. And what's changed since? Well, deadlines on greenhouse gas emissions keep passing, the climate keeps getting hotter. Last year, in the U.S., storms, wildfires, landslides, they were all above the annual average. Hurricane Michael, which tore through the states earlier this month, was the most powerful storm there since 1969. Just a couple of weeks ago, the IPCC, a United Nations body dedicated to studying climate change, came out with a report that pretty much predicts that the end of the world is coming soon unless we drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Joining us now is 21-year-old Jacob LaBelle. He was born in Quebec but moved to the States as a kid. He's one of those young Americans suing the government in the States. And he joins us by Skype from Roseburg, Oregon. So, Jacob, people have been trying for so long to try and tackle climate change. Why do you think that a group of young people can make a difference here? Well, first of all, um, the nice thing about the legal system is that <laughs> If you win, it is legally binding. So unlike the Paris Climate Agreement, which was very good, uh, but it didn't actually force uh, the governments that participated in it to do um, anything. It was just an in in intention uh, to do something. And so what we're saying with our lawsuit is there are actual constitutional rights and human rights at stake with this climate crisis and in the government's uh, role in promoting and worsening that crisis. And so if the, if the courts uh, actually rule in our favor and agree with our arguments, then the government uh, will be compelled um, to meet its constitutional responsibilities to young people. The trial is supposed to start later this month, but now the U.S. Department of Justice is, is trying to stop it. Does that mean they're listening to you? Does it mean they're scared or are you scared? I, I think they're they're scared, um, and and for a couple of reasons. One, it's uh, the climate science is very clear, and uh, in the political arena, you can you know say whatever you want about the science basically these days, and really kind of um, of slander and and misrepresent uh, the science. Well, in courts, that's called perjury, and so uh, they're actually not. Uh, fighting any of our uh, of our allegations on the climate science uh, in courts, they're admitting to all the facts. The Trump administration is saying climate change is real and is happening and is human caused, uh, just like they've admitted in their own, own reports recently, where they admitted seven degrees Fahrenheit of warming by the end of the century. And so um, that makes uh, this case very hard for them uh, to win and to fight in court. Just one last question: Why is it? young people doing this? Well, I mean, that's that's the, the crux of our case, right? Is, uh, you know, <laughs> forgive me saying, but for a lot of the politicians in our in our systems, uh, their life expectancy is, uh, is definitely much shorter than ours. Uh, and so, you know, the next 10, 20 years, you might see some bad effects of climate change, but in our projected lifetimes, if we are blessed to, to live uh, to live those projected uh, lifetimes, 
we will see not just bad effects, but catastrophic effects of climate change, which are, which are laid out in the latest IPCC reports. And so there's, there's a big difference between uh, what Donald Trump uh, will face and what we will face. Uh, there's, there's an enormous difference. Jacob Lubell, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you as well. It's a pleasure.